script. If you crane your neck back, you'll see your number retired up here in the dome. The first women's athlete here at Syracuse University to have her jersey retired. The former Buffalo head coach in her second year with the program and her second game of the season faces Central Connecticut for the first time as the head woman of the orange. Alyssa Latham on for the tip for Syracuse. And the freshman wins it easily to Elena Rice, the fifth year, as the Orange start with possession. The last time the Blue Devils were in the dome, they lost by over 50 to the Orange, as DeAsia Fair misses the three, and Alyssa Latham loses it down low. Well, that was a different year for Syracuse. That was a different team in many facets. Syracuse a lot better now, too. Three returning starters for this Central Connecticut team, including Lanfer and the big Kenefick as Central Connecticut turns it over quickly on its first possession. Kenefick, the senior from just outside of Washington, D.C., can't corral it in the near corner. Meanwhile, for Syracuse, DeAsia Fair back as well as Elena Rice. But three new players, a couple freshmen in Latham and Burroughs, and the transfer from Michigan in Verizal make up the starting five. Verizal holds top of the key. And DeAsia Fair. The All-ACC preseason member launches it over to the Australian, Sophie Burrows. Rice, a runner, planks off the back iron. Latham loses control and snatched away by Emma Broom. This was an early problem for Syracuse against Lafayette. Neither team scored for about the first two minutes of action. Syracuse went on to win that game 75-41 on Tuesday. After the slow start where the Leopards led for the first half of the first quarter. Central Connecticut, meanwhile, off the heels of a 17-point loss to Manhattan. Shot clock down to five, and Verjao draws the charge against Kenefick. Big on big crime. And she gets her feet set really late in it. There you go. That's a textbook charge. Felicia Leggett Jack said that Verjao is someone she's still working back into shape, so it's really promising for Syracuse to see her make such an aggressive play this early on. Well, the reason she's working herself back in the shape as she thinks about the three is the grad student, originally from Michigan, did not play at all for the Wolverines a season ago and has not played much over her last two collegiate seasons. Burrows for three, and she banks it in. First points of the first game of his season a few days ago. Deja vu here in the Dome on a Friday night. That's exactly what she does, Jesse. Made really? four threes in that game on Tuesday. Really easy to count on her. One of the top players coming out of Australia for her class. One of two freshmen getting the starting nod. Nod for the Orange today. Kenefick, the big with the corner three. And she converts. First three-pointer on the year for the native of Oakton, Virginia. And only the second three through two games for Central Connecticut. They only shot one of 17 from distance on Monday. Latham the turnaround, too strong. Amaya Williams, the native of Syracuse, brings it up the floor. Whips it to Kenefick, but deflected on the way. Verijal tussles again with Kenefick in a jump ball. Well, there's that aggression again for Verijal. Working her back into shape. Mentally, it looks like she's already there. Verijal, originally from Vitoria, a city in southeast Brazil. Spent four years in Michigan, but didn't play for the Wolverines last year. Helped Michigan get to the Sweet 16 two years ago. Kenefick again. The big showing their range early on. And Kenefick all five of the Blue Devils points as they lead. She started every game last year. Verjao hasn't started much over the last few years, but you couldn't tell there. Scored three points in the opener and already has two to tie it up a few minutes into the first quarter. Samora Watson, the transfer of East Carolina, spins to the block, and there she travels. She might have played over 30 minutes in the first game of the year for CCSU, Jesse, on Monday against Manhattan, but Watson only played seven total minutes a year ago with ECU. Yeah, plenty of career highs for her in that game. I mean, 15 points. She had never scored more. She had never gotten double digits before. Verjao on the block. Cross-court feed. Catch and shoot three. Airmailed by Burroughs. Did make four triples in an exhibition win against St. Rose last, last week, but 
The Australian only shot two of seven from distance on Tuesday against the Leopards. Emma Bruin gets it over to Bell Lanford, the star of this team, denied by the freshman Alyssa Latham. In transition, here's Elena Rice. The Florida native gets it back to Burroughs with a lot of room, and she makes it look easy. Burroughs, her second basket. Really impressive use of space there. She took a pick, found herself with no one around, and it was an easy decision for her to shoot that. Quiet start for DeAsia Fair. She's only shot the ball once and is scoreless. Watson off a pick, gets it right to the wrong team. Good pass ahead to, guess who? DeAsia Fair. Burroughs finds her, and Syracuse up by four. That transition offense for Syracuse is something that could really play in key later on. It was a struggle last season. A lot of times missing on those breakaways with that tight defense coming from behind. Not afraid of the threat this time. Syracuse on a 6-0 run over the last 90 seconds, settling in, trying to pick up its fifth straight all-time win against the Blue Devils. Watson bricks a three from the corner. She shot the ball over 20 times on Monday. DeAsia Fair's got the green light, and that's why. Back-to-back -back buckets for the preseason All-ACC teamer in the orange on a 9-0 run as Vacuse lead by seven halfway through the first quarter on ACC. Syracuse on a 9-0 run over the last two minutes to take the early lead over Central Connecticut. Jesse, it's because the freshmen have found the fifth year. Absolutely they have. Felicia get Jack said she's not treating the first years like freshmen, but man, do they know who to go to. Trust your elders. First assist from Sophie Burrows, the second from Alyssa Latham. Two of the three freshmen on this Syracuse squad. The Orange also signed four players in the class of 2024 yesterday, including two four-stars. Felicia Leggett Jack building an army in her second year with Orange. Amaya Williams, who went to FLJ's alma mater of Nottingham High on the floor. She's at the top of the key. But Bruin bounce passes it down low, and it's nearly poked away by Kennefick. In the corner, Ali Sentence, a splash. And the 9-0 run ends for SU. Bear with five consecutive points, and the second most points among all scorers in the nation. Gets it to Elena Rice, who scored in double figures against Lafayette on Tuesday, and the reverse lay for her first points tonight. Williams over to Lanfer. The Massachusetts native defers, and back to Williams. Good cut from Sentence off the bench. The first substitution for either team turns it over. Rice ahead to Fair, who's already got one triple. Three for Verjao, off to the right. Made a couple of threes through her first three collegiate seasons with Michigan, but has yet to make a triple here in the 3-1-5. A splash from the paint. Amaya Williams, the hometown kid, with her first bucket of the night. Second basket this season for her, too. Williams scored over 1,000 points at Nottingham High School and also played against the Orange in December of 2021. Four points in that game. Bears already got five points. That one nearly rolled in from three. There's Yao, the offensive board. Rice walled off by Lanfer. Now goes to her right and scores. Calls for the and one. Doesn't get it, but does get the score. That was some of the most impressive ball handling we've seen from Elena Rice. She tried it behind the back, created some extra space, and had room. Central Connecticut has kept up with Syracuse scoring-wise, despite only scoring 35 points on Monday against Manhattan. Push off from Amaya Williams. That's an offensive foul on the junior Syracuse takes over as Kyra Wood and Kennedy Perkins check in for DeAsia Fair and Isabel Verja. We saw, we saw a lot more from, a, from Kennedy Perkins late in the season last year. Amaya Williams, her father, you could see her painted on her t-shirt. The Syracuse native, of course, coming to support her daughter who plays her college ball just outside of Hartford, Connecticut with CCSU. Elena Rice through traffic, she carries. She's handled the ball early and often today, Jesse. She's trusted in her third year with the program, but a little too much dribbling there. And nobody bats a thousand. 
even on the basketball court where you don't even have a bat. But Elena Rice has showed a lot of promise really early in this one. And against Lafayette, she showed that she's ready to go for this season. She said that she was expected to take a jump this year. Lanford took the jump last season for Central Connecticut. She passes it away. Averaged over 13 points a season ago. Tries to get a point here tonight. She does. But three from the right wing for her first points of the evening. Fair with the righty dribble. Fading and scoring. The Rochester native makes it look all too easy. Seven points already for the Asia Fair. Already six turnovers for Central Connecticut. That's not a turnover, that's a swat from Elena Rice. The ball stays with CCSU. She stayed with her that entire play, and that's been a matchup that I think we're gonna wanna watch through this one. Williams and Rice, on with Rice on defense, it's been really tight. Williams has tried a couple step backs to break her ankles, and it hasn't worked yet. Williams gets it in the Lanfer. Kenefick, the senior. Finds Williams, shot clock under 10. Gets by Rice and scores. Jesse, you must have the magic eight ball. Well, she found a room there, but it was not without some off ball movement to create that room for her. Here's some movement from the Asia Fair. It's almost a guarantee she's gonna get involved early. And the Nancy Lieberman Award watch list her up to nine points. Felt like she got involved a little later against Lafayette with those third quarter threes. Man, she can do it in any quarter. 17 points against Lafayette. Fair now a point away from her 39th consecutive game in double digits. Lanfair rolls one short off the front of a rim. Fair only about 200 points shy of becoming the 25th highest scoring women's college basketball player ever. She continues to rise up the ranks and can add to her scoring totals after she's fouled by Williams on the lay -in. Two shots at the line for Fair, who was fifth in the ACC a year ago in free throw percentage at over 80. And Jesse, a lot of people were very high on DeAsia Fair when she came to Syracuse a year ago following Felicia Leggett Jack from Buffalo, but she still proved a lot of people wrong in the ACC. That's right, now she's on those preseason watch lists. She wasn't a year ago, but DeAsia Fair has proved herself and then some, without a doubt, probably the most important player on last year's team as far as game-to-game -game contribution. With that first free throw make, she drills both of them, give her 11 already. DeAsia Fair, 39 straight games, dating back to her time at Buffalo with double-digit points. Another swat out of bounds for Syracuse. The ball stays with the Blue Devils. Syracuse already with multiple blocks today. Only had two blocks against Lafayette on Tuesday. And the defense for Felicia Leggett Jack, that's been the sticking point this year. Kyra Wood, the two-time captain, knows it. Rice picks up her dribble, gets it to Wood, hounded by two Blue Devils, and she's fouled. Ian, don't mess with the cues in the low post on either side of the floor. Now four blocks for the team, and Kyra Wood gets herself an opportunity at the line with that spin move in transition there. Just a full on extension on the shot from Lanfer. Talked to Coach Jack before the game, and she mentioned, Kyra Wood's got to remember she has that six foot six wingspan. When she extends, it's tough to get around her. On offense, that creates opportunities underneath the hoop because she can go up and straight up score. On defense, you get what you just saw. Average three points and three and a half rebounds a game in her first year with Syracuse. Spent her freshman season at Temple. Was recruited by Felicia Leggett Jack to play at UB, a Buffalo native. Just wanted to get out of Western New York and said it was the perfect situation to reunite with FLJ when she found out her move to Central New York. DeAsia Fair, but steal and the stumble as she runs right in the Lanfer and it's going the other way. Well, Fair slowed up at the end of that play. Lanfer did a good job of getting set in the paint far enough away from the basket. And watch what Fair does here. She slows down and that's a mistake because it gives Lanfer time to get set. She was trying to just Get her team set, see if anyone was coming from behind. Came back to bite her. First foul for Fair, who's already got 11 points. 
Lexi McNabb into the game alongside Fair in the backcourt, replacing Elena Rice. Open deep two, and it clanks short. Samora Watson, who had 15 points, a team high on Monday against Manhattan, has yet to score tonight. DeAsia Fair looks for another score, and she gets it from long range. 14 points for Fair, and her second trifecta. And that's how the first quarter ends. Almost be beating Central Connecticut alone right now, but she is the leader of this team, and she knows she needs a little bit more than herself to get it done. Oh, there she is still on the floor, trying to do a little bit more herself. She's got some good help out there, though. The help includes Lexi McNabb, Kennedy Perkins, Sanaya Wilson making her first action of the season, and Kyra Wood, the five on the floor for the Orange. Perkins, the Chicago native, swings it to Wood, who backs her opponent down and rolls it down over Kennefick. Second bucket for Kyra Wood in Syracuse, ahead by 13. It was close for the first few minutes, Jesse, but Syracuse has really found its stride and 11 of 17 from the floor. Well, remember, even when it was a seven or nine point lead for Syracuse, Central Connecticut State still brought it back to close. Kennefick from close range misses, but tipped away by Lanfer. Regardless, Syracuse with the rock. McNabb ahead to Perkins. Down the left alley. Fades away and comes up empty. Kennefick, a top 10 rebounder in the NEC a year ago, snatches the board for CCSU. Well, Perkins did a good job of making sure she had room, but by the time that she stopped, her feet weren't really set. Nobody set up under the basket to defend Kayla Henry. Good feed from Kennefick to find the freshman wide open. And the 10-0 run ends for SU. Fair buries her shoulder in the land for He comes up short. That is the thing that Central Connecticut State is doing a little better than Syracuse right now, is passing the ball. Syracuse trying to do a lot of it on its own. CCSU making plays like that, creating space in the paint and having lots of off-ball movement instead of ISO plays. And that's not a play on film. It's going to make head coach Felicia get Jack happy. In the preseason buildup, as Megan Kennefick making her mark felt early in this game. The preseason buildup for Syracuse, Jesse. The defense, which was second worst in the ACC a year ago, needed to improve. Good look from the corner for Watson. And the defense again folds for the Orange. Back-to-back -back buckets for the Blue Devils. Yeah, Syracuse allowed the second most points in the ACC, nearly 68 every game. Central Connecticut's got more points early on in the second quarter than it had in the entirety of the first half on Monday against Manhattan. Sanaya Wilson, the Rochester native, charges through and banks it in. First points of the year for Wilson. Like DeAsia Fair out of Rochester, and she was really highly recruited early on, even when she was in middle school. Got an offer to play at Syracuse in eighth grade. And originally committed to play at Seton Hall, then went to play a year at Buffalo before rejoining FLJ alongside six other players last season from UB to SU. <laughs> Missing off the right side of a rim, Watson who continues to be heavily involved. Five shots up, but only one down for the native of Heat City, Texas, just outside of Houston. Elena Rice with the left-handed charge towards the rim. Verizhao cleans it up and puts it in. That's what Syracuse missed a season ago, but six foot four big converts. Syracuse did not have a set center last season. Now, the Orange do. Without Dariana Lewis this year after her grad transfer. But Lewis, who they called Stretch, was stretching six foot. Verja is a legitimate 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, and Lewis was listed as a forward, and it's because of that height. That ball goes right to Verja. Fair, who hasn't hit the bench yet. Swings it to Lexi McNabb, and a sophomore from Arizona travels. Looking at what's going on around the hill for Syracuse and the entirety of its athletics, Orange United. It's the preferred collective of Syracuse University athletics. It helps to empower Orange student athletes by supporting the Orange United match campaign. From now to December 11th, members receive access to exclusive content, contests, community forums, invitations to VIP meet and greets, and more. Ball to stay with CCSU after it trickles out of play in between Felicia Leggett-Jack and her top assistant, Kyrie Carter. Come on, come on, 
Bell Lanford to put it in play. Williams to Sentance. The three, swatted away by Fair. She just got a piece of it, doing it on both ends. Now trying to do it on the offensive end. DeAsia Fair can't be stopped. 17 points and her third triple. And that was from a ridiculous distance. That might have been longer than 25 feet. Led the ACC in three-point percentage a year ago and already has as many threes tonight as she had in game one against Lafayette. A 7-0 run for the Orange. Lafayette without a bucket in the last two minutes. Kenefick changes it. She has been the star of this team right now, not Bell Lanford. Bear tries to stay hot. Spinning a score. Alyssa Latham had a double-double in her SU debut on Tuesday and cleans up the mess there. Elena Rice, a one-woman effort. She said, give me the ball, Amaya Williams, and let me do my thing. This is some of the best basketball many of these veterans have played this season, and it's even better than some of the great games they had last year. Elena Rice doing things on both sides, as is the Asia Fair. Rebounding and defense turning into offense for Syracuse as the runner from land for Mrs. Wine. And McNabb tries to go coast to coast. DeAsia Fair bricks it a little hot. Rebound Verijal. One on one and the score over Kennepick. A fist pump from Verijal as she has more than double the points tonight than she did in her SU debut. What did Coach Jack say? She just had to get a little warm. Just a little warm. Top of the arc for Lanfer as Syracuse now on a 13-3 run in the last three minutes. Kenefick, the lone consistent version of offense for the Blue Devils. She has eight points. But the leading scorer, Bell Lanfer. The captain converts on the lay-in. Still a 16-point lead for SU over halfway down in the second quarter. Well, Lanfer was second team all NEC last season, not afraid of contact. There's some contact on the hardwood. McNabb turns it over. Kenefick with the steal. A double dribble on Bell Lanfer, and CCSU turns it over. Defense turning into offense for the second worst defense in the ACC a season ago. The five foot five, the Asia Fair blocks it, and the five foot five, the Asia Fair scores it. How about us? Kitley, two of the top players in the nation. Kitley, someone who Syracuse will see in ACC play. Clark and Iowa made headlines last season. So DeAsia Fair in that group, I'm not surprised. Clark and Kitley went at it last night in a top 10 battle in a rematch of a Final Four battle a year ago. Liz Kitley and crew fell to Caitlin Clark in Iowa. DeAsia Fair, she said before this season her goal to get to 3,500 points by the end of her fifth collegiate season. I don't think it's out of the question. She keeps playing like she is today and like she did near the end of the season last year. I'd say that's a sure thing. For a player that has scored 20 points or more in two out of every three games in her collegiate career, what isn't possible? Verizhou gets it to her on the far wing. Back to Verizhou who has six points and is fouled on her way towards the cup by Kayla Henry, the freshman from East Hartford, Connecticut. Well, Verichow is doing a good job on those spin moves because she has a little shimmy over to her right and moves over to her left. And that creates an easy opportunity for her to try that hook shot like she did there. Didn't go in, but Central Connecticut State made the contact and put her at the line anyway. Well, Verichow so nimble because she didn't really grow up playing basketball. She grew up originally with a passion for ballet. Tried ballet, swimming, volleyball, jazz, pretty much everything that wasn't basketball. But she said for a family that had her grandfather, mother, aunts, and uncles who all played basketball, there was no escaping this life. There's no escaping DeAsia Fair. 20 first half points. An unbelievable talent continues to get it done. Fair 
doesn't need a whole lot of space to hit those shots. She can do it when it's contested, but when she's by herself, you don't want to be on the other team. Her father, Terrence, knows that best. She got it done in Rochester at Edison Tech High School, where she was the first player to go to Division I since the late 90s. 20 points for her in this first half. That was her fourth three. Syracuse has made four of the last five shots. Lanford from the far wing. Under five on the shot clock. Extra pass to the corner, and a good shot contest from the freshman Latham forces the travel at a sentence. And Alyssa Latham, first top 100 recruit for head coach FLJ. And like Jack said, I'm not gonna treat her like a freshman. I'm going to treat her like the player she wants to become. Had 15 and 10 on Tuesday against Lafayette, but in the post-game press conference, Leggett Jack said she could have had 25 or 30. Burroughs spins inside and collides with her fellow freshman, travels and turns it over. Sometimes with these first years, you're still gaining your footing. It's kind of like watching a puppy where the paws are a little too big for the body. They've got all the right instincts, they've got all the right moves. It's just putting them together at the same time. What a masterful way with words. Me or Sophie Burns? I'll go with you. She does her talking with the shot making. Easy pass, Elena Rice to DeAsia Fair. And another CCSU turnover. Fair up to 22, and Father Terrence is still pretty happy. Six steals for the Orange. And Elena Rice has been a beast on the defensive end. Speak of a devil. Syracuse back with the ball on the right side of the floor. There is Zhao, all alone finds Rice. One dribble and a miss. Latham with a good effort down low. She smiles, but can't get the ball. And you can see Terrence Fair in the background making a pushing motion, trying to convince the referees from about 20 feet off the court. We should look at Jack and way Vini got to work the officials, but that's what home crowd support means, right? Well, it feels like for the Fair family, it's always home crowd because they travel with her to these games. From Western New York to Central New York. Kennefick, who leads CCSU in scoring tonight, misses a mid-range shot. She already has eight points. There is Fair, one-on-one -on -one with Watson. Gets it to Latham, who charges and misses, but gets her own miss and is denied. Kennefick curls into a ball. Pestered by both Verizhao and Latham and earns the ball for the Blue Devils. Not a bad move down there. Maybe you might lose track of who gets the ball at what time with the jump ball situation, but at least you get a stoppage. You prevent Syracuse from having some transition offense. And it worked out for CCSC holding on to the ball. Verizhao out for the orange and in is Kyra Wood, who started towards the tail end of last year for Syracuse. Amaya Williams frustrated after she turns it over on a travel. That's the fifth turnover in the last three minutes for the Orange. And somebody who doesn't turn it over often when she's on the floor, Dominique Camp. But unfortunately, Jesse, the Akron transfer, is not going to play the rest of the season for Syracuse. It was announced before the game. She'll be out for the entirety of the season with a knee problem. That's right. She. Spent some time with FLJ in her last season in Buffalo. Last year with Akron, more than 10 points per game. A big loss for Syracuse, but right now without her, the Orange are looking pretty good. Camp was expected to play a big role as a ball handler for this team, starting in the backcourt alongside the Asia Fair. A lot more Kennedy Perkins and Lexi McNabb as a result of that injury. Alyssa Latham makes her first shot from the line. Syracuse four points away from its most points in a first half under Felicia Leggett Jack with 51. And you mentioned Kennedy Perkins there. Well, she got a couple starts in the last regular season game and in the ACC tournament. So FLJ tried her out more towards the end of the season and she liked what she saw. Coach Vini's not gonna like what she saw there as she looks towards her bench. A turnover that slips out of the hands of Ali Sentence. That is seven turnovers in the last five minutes for the Blue Devils. 
who scored only 35 points on Monday at Manhattan, their third fewest in a game in program history. A turnover party. Elena Rice with an extra dribble from the far way. Yeah, the referee is not afraid to call travels early in that motion. It is what it is. If you move with the ball, you move. That call came from official Justin Paluch, officiating tonight alongside Adrian Gilmore and Bruce Morris. Watson swings it over to Lanford, who's been quiet, just five points for the preseason All-NEC selection. Watson pulls up, pretty shot over the outstretched arms of Kyra Wood to cut the deficit to 20. Burroughs with nowhere to go, but Lexi McNabb supports her. Deasia Fair not on the floor for the first time tonight for Syracuse. And the possession nearly goes awry. McNabb again finds the loose ball. Five seconds until the half. McNabb, an individual effort. Frustrated she couldn't put it home, but she does go to the line for two. Well, I guess leave it to the daughter of a football player to pick up a couple fumbles and try to convert it into offense. It's only a matter of time until we squeak that one in. If you know the last name and you know Syracuse, you obviously know that Lexi, the daughter, not only of Donovan McNabb, arguably the best quarterback in Syracuse football history, but also the daughter of Roxy McNabb, who was a fantastic point guard in the late 90s and was coached by Felicia Leggett Jack when FLJ was an assistant here with Syracuse. One for two trip from the line, snatched by Kennethick, who has nowhere to go, and that's the first half from the Dome. Syracuse, a 21-point lead, trying to pick up its second consecutive win. National champs upset by 20th ranked Colorado by double-digit points to start the season. Start of the second half here from the JMA Dome. Ian Nicholas and Jesse Cook on the call. Thanks so much for joining us. Syracuse turns it over on its opening possession as Verajal chases it down. A pass just wide of the freshman. And Olathe, Marice couldn't connect with her. Well, here's where Central, Central Connecticut can make its money in the second half. If you can get on the board early, that'll be good. Can't get on the board there. Maya Williams, the junior, and Syracuse native with the miss. Syracuse to take over. It hasn't been the shooting that's been the problem for CCSU, Jesse. More turnovers than shots made so far. That's right, 15 turnovers in the first half. There's a shot made. DeAsia Fair, her fifth from long range, give her 25 on the night. On the other end, Lanfer from distance, a little strong, offensive board, and the putback goes. Megan Kenefick now with double digit points, doing it all in her junior season for CCSU. And she's been fantastic in this one. Started every game last year, hasn't slowed down tonight. Fair. She's got five triples. Her career high is eight. She set that last year on the road against Virginia Tech. Defers down low to Elena Rice. Potential three-point play. Not afraid of contact. Elena Rice took that and fought her way through, and she kept her head up in the middle there. She's getting fouled, and she was dead set on the basket. Lanfer with the foul. Sydney said it at the half. Wanted to see more from Elena Rice, and... The Florida native was listening. Has a chance for her ninth point, and she gets it at the line. Also three assists for the fifth year. Began her collegiate career at Florida A&M, where she was the MEAC Rookie of the Year, transferred to Auburn for a season, but has found her forever home here with Syracuse. A little too aggressive there, but a turnover. Forced by Rice, smiles after she gets the better of Lanford. That's right, over and back called again CCSU. And I talked to Rice before the season, and she said that part of what kept her at Syracuse is there's this ongoing mentality to win, but also to get everyone involved. The Asia Fair has been heavily involved, but misses that shot for 15th of the night. Rice said, quote, every journey leads you somewhere greater. That somewhere greater has been here at Syracuse. Missed from the far wing from Lanford. Snatched away by Watson in transition. It's by Latham, but is now trapped. Syracuse starting to trap on the far wing. Lanford, the Massachusetts native, swings it right to Kennethick. A little strong on the three, and Rice, who had double-digit rebounds on Monday. The season opener for Syracuse gets it 
to Sophie Burrows, who spins and scores off the glass over Lanford. Syracuse has been really good at making fast decisions in close to the basket. High pressure situations, not in a high pressure moment, up by this much, but they turn on the Jets, and that decision making has just been really stellar. Syracuse shooting over 60% from the field on the game. Williams the triple. Off back iron. Rice, acrobatics on the baseline. And she gets it right back from Berija. Up ahead the fair. Who defers to Burroughs, who gets the wide open look and can't bank it in. But look at the fellow freshman. Alyssa Latham going 100% down low. And Syracuse doubling up Central Connecticut. More than twice as many points in the paint as the Blue Devils. A shot from the short corner drops for sentence. The Canadian, from just an hour south of Toronto, drills it. Deasia Fair down the left alley, and one! Clap for yourself, Deasia. You've got nearly 30 points. Nearly 30 points, not even two and a half quarters. And there, she found her edge and went straight to the bucket. It helps that her defender is roughly the same size, so there's not some hulking 6'5 center guarding her. But Fair still, she had that good front step, and it gave her all the momentum she needed. Well, she's had momentum ever since her first game of her collegiate career, which happened to be a 20-point double-double performance against Central Connecticut. Same opponent, and it also makes you think of Lafayette on Tuesday for Alyssa Latham. 15 points and a double-double in her debut right next to DeAsia Fair. Fair defending Williams in the corner, Syracuse playing zone. Elena Rice, who has been a ball magnet tonight, helps snatch it away. Feeds it to the lengthy Kyra Wood, who gets it done with a spinorama. Lanfer hits the deck. Kyra Wood has shown promise for a long time at Temple and at Syracuse, and it's paying off through these first couple games. The offense paying off in every way, shape, and form for Syracuse. That's why Central Connecticut and Coach Wavini. Amaya Williams may play for Central Connecticut, but it all started in Syracuse at Nottingham High School a few years ago for the junior. She was a fantastic player who most likely would have finished top five scoring in Bulldogs history if it weren't for the COVID-19 pandemic. But she scored over 1,000 career points, and so did Syracuse's own head coach nearly 40 years ago in Felicia Leggett Jack. Not bad company. FLJ with her number retired, Amaya Williams. The start of a good career with Central Connecticut. Amaya's father in attendance tonight. Felicia Leggett Jack not only scored a ton of points with the Bulldogs, but also retired from Syracuse as the Orange's all-time leader in both rebounds and points scored. Lanfer for Central Connecticut off the timeout. Syracuse on a 12-2 run. And she is down in a bit of pain as she hits the deck hard, but is all right after some contact with Latham down low. The foul charged against Elena Rice, who pursued her from behind, but then got swiped in that left shoulder area by the freshman Latham. Uh, just a matter of wrong place, wrong time. Latham came to the aid of Rice to try and help on defense, and we've seen that move be successful for her before earlier in this game. This didn't work out there. Luckily, everyone's all right. We shall get Jack trying to make sure the rest of her team is all right as the Asia Fair on the bench to start the second half with nearly 30 points. Lanford goes one for two. She converted 85% of her looks from the stripe a season ago, the most in the NEC. Elena Rice behind the back move through traffic, no problem. Elena Rice continues to be a force in the second game of the season for SU. Up to double digit points for the second straight game. And she's someone who improves, it feels like, with every game, playing better than ever right now. Average six points and five rebounds a season ago for Syracuse, starting at over 20 games. Landford gets by Perkins, Wood in the entirety of the SU defense for this score. And that's the player Central Connecticut needs to be on her A game all season long if they don't want to finish bottom in the NEC for the second year in a row. 
Burrows with the miss, but the offensive board for Wood. Perkins, full head of steam, diving for it. Latham can't get it. Williams, one-on-one -on -one with Wood. The New Yorkers go at it, and Syracuse takes down Buffalo for the score. CCSU still down by 29. As Rice has a bit of room from the top of the key. Off the Wood screen, gets it to Wood. But Latham cleans it up and gets it done again. Seven points for Latham after her double-double a few days ago. A four-star recruit coming out of the suburbs of Chicago last year. In between the trees, Lanford dishes it out. Williams, jump step, score! Pumped up as Central Connecticut's going blow for blow right now, and her father, with the cutout of her daughter, his daughter, excited. Kennedy Perkins, and one! The offense flying around in the dome. Emma Brun with the who's got seven points and nine rebounds in just her second career game. Not the only crocheter on the court right now. Jesse? Well, we're just off the court. I learned to do it a while ago, and she said she's like an old lady. I learned to, to crochet with my grandma, although I'm not good. I probably couldn't even do a bracelet right now. You also solve some puzzles as well? I do, I do. I'm a little better at those, because you know the pieces just stick together. Kyra Wood sticks together down low after Kennedy Perkins misses the free throw off the timeout. Syracuse just four fewer points in today's game than it had in the entirety of its season opener on Monday. Tuesday round. Land holds from the near side. These two offenses really clicking right now, Jesse. The pace is picked up in the middle of this third quarter. Seven straight shots made between these two teams. And we saw glimpses of this for Syracuse against Lafayette, where especially in the second quarter, they would just go blow for blow down the court, and sometimes it would result in a miss, and the other team would input some transition offense. But other times, it was just very fast play, running the ball over half court, and trying to jumpstart the offense through an open lane. The lane does not open up for Lanfer. That's why she dishes it out. Sentence back to Lanfer, who gets McNabb in the air. Stolen away by Wood, who tight ropes the sideline and keeps it with Kennedy Perkins. De'Asia Fair back in the game for Syracuse, but Perkins goes coast to coast and gets it done. Back to back buckets for the Illinois native. Well, Perkins is so strong with lateral movement on that and one basket before the last break. She had his jab step and really sent her body to the right, which pushed the defender with her and at the last second just turned it back left and found room for the basket. Off the front rim from Kennefick. And out of bounds off the CCSU. Deasia Fair with 28 points on the game. First year head coach, Way Vini. Talked to us before the game and said, that team runs through Fair. And Fair agrees. She said, if I lead, Syracuse follows. And her demeanor always has to stay even keel because if she's panicked, then the rest of her team will be panicked. Fair, the lob to the freshman Latham. Double team down low, doesn't matter. Approaching a second straight double-double. And Fair shows she's also a terrific passer. First assist on the game for her. Passer and a great lead play. A great individual effort from Emma Brune, the junior from North Jersey. Gives Central Connecticut its 40th points of the game. Five more points for CCSU tonight than it had against Manhattan on Monday. The lowest scoring offense in all of the NEC last season. Kyra Wood, fundamental down low. Off the assist from Lexi McNabb. Wood tried to expand her offensive game in the offseason. Scored a Syracuse high 12 points on Tuesday against Lafayette and has nine points tonight. The Asia Fair, the defense gets back in time for CCSU. She dishes it to McNabb who lets it fly and the bench goes wild. Vexi McNabb with her second three in as many games to start the campaign. Syracuse once again doubling up Central Connecticut. Williams too strong on the response. Latham can't snatch it away. Fighting down low with Broom. 
Central Connecticut keeps it. Jesse, everything looks good right now for Syracuse. 13 to two run. They didn't have a problem scoring the ball last season. One of the best offenses in the ACC. And so for Syracuse, what changed is that DeAsia Fair is looking even more consistent, which sounds crazy to say, because she was great last year. DeAsia Fair does come short on that three as try to pull up in transition. Not the similar result these two teams have played recently. December 2021, the last time Central Connecticut came to the Dome. Manhattan and Syracuse looking at the matchups of the last couple of games for Central Connecticut as Ali Senton splashes a three. This looks like a much improved offense, Jesse, for first year head coach Wavini. Oh, but offense looks good on the other end too. Yes, well absolutely for Central Connecticut where you jump up from 20% shooting on the entire game. That, that never brings a smile to a coach's face. But Syracuse also turning on the Jets offensively, both of them high shooting percentages. Brune turns it over nearly. It's off of Syracuse's Kennedy Perkins down low. I mean, Syracuse from the field shooting nearly 80%, 78.9% shooting in Central Connecticut, more than doubly better than they were against Manhattan. 46.7 field goal percentage. Three-pointer from the left wing comes up short for Lanford, who hobbles and is still on the wrong end of the court. But now on the right end, as it's snatched away by Sentence. Gets it to Lamper. She was in the right place at the right time. And Coach Vini, who's in her first year as a head coach at the D1 level, told us before the game, they'll take the moral victories, especially against an ACC program like Syracuse. This is a really big step up offensively for the Blue Devils as McNabb turns it over. Sentence on an island. Can't splash it in to end the third quarter. It rims out. 82 points through three quarters for Syracuse. Trying to pick up its second win of the season. We're voted ninth in the preseason poll this season. Year one under Felicia Leggett Jack, a five win improvement in the conference win column compared to the previous year where Syracuse finished dead last in the conference. Kyra Wood holds from the left wing. DeAsia Fair, who had 22 points at the break, only scored six in the third quarter. Won't score more there as she charges against Bell Lanfer and turns it over. That physicality has been on full display from both these teams. A lot of offensive fouls in this one. Both teams holding up strong, especially around the apex of the three-point arc. Lanfer gets it to the top of the key. Motion offense for CCSU. Sees an open look for three from Lanfer. That clanks off the top of one of our cameras. Kyra Wood checking in to make sure everything's okay. That's Chilling expensive down. equipment. Well, Wood knows she is in the Newhouse School, the communications school at Syracuse. Yeah, she's familiar with it. McNabb stumbles. Fouled on the play by Amaya Williams. But she's all good. McNabb didn't play much as a freshman for Syracuse. Her mom played a lot. She's in attendance tonight. Roxy, a four-year starter, a two-time team MVP. A lot of great basketball lineage in the family. We already mentioned that Lexi, not only the daughter of Roxy, but her father, Donovan, not only the quarterback here at Syracuse, but a former walk-on for Jim Beheim's team in the mid-90s. Zaniah Wilson, the miss off the right side. Although that was a miss, uh, Felicia Leggett Jack was very happy to see Sanaya re-enter the lineup. She said before the game that she's an aggressive player. Watson was aggressive on Monday against Manhattan. Over 20 shots in her first collegiate shot. First collegiate start, that is. Scores one off the glass. Central Connecticut approaching nearly 50 points on the game after scoring only 35 on Monday. The miss from Burroughs, the second chance from Wilson, and Jesse right on cue. That's what she can do down low. 
just about everyone on the Syracuse bench jumped up and cheered there. They're happy to see Sanaya back in action. Missed the season opener. And missed a good chunk of her freshman season with Buffalo two years ago due to injury. Kyra Wood with a good pass to Wilson and a nifty move to get free. Second chance, third chance, foul. Her and Kayla Henry going at it from the low block. And Wilson ever aggressive in the low post. It's not so much a finesse move down there for her normally, but she broke herself free with a nice front left foot to get a stay in bounds, but also one step closer to the basket without driving herself over and underneath. Solid move, just needs to work on the finish. Wilson with four points tonight, averaged four points a season ago for Syracuse. She was a top 20 forward in the country, according to ESPN, out of Bishop Kearney High School, where she began her varsity career as an eighth grader. That's when she picked up an offer from Syracuse, her first ever collegiate offer. Misses a second free throw, but Burrows with the rebound, and she finds Wilson, who continues to score. Syracuse getting to the line often tonight. Eight free throw makes compared to just one for CCSU. Hesitation from Watson. Picked up by Latham, the big defending out on the perimeter. Foul as she charges towards the cup. That's a smart play for Samora Watson. Sure, you're going up against the trees, a lot of hands in your face, but you know you're gonna run into some contact. And Central Connecticut State did a good job of clearing players out of there. It wasn't necessarily an ISO play, but she had plenty of room to force that contact and get to the line. DeAsia Fair gets a round of applause from the Syracuse faithful as she subs out for Kennedy Perkins. Watson up to eight points with her make from the strike. Only played seven total minutes during her freshman season at East Carolina a year ago. That wasn't the original plan for the Houston native. Originally was committed to play at Temple where her current head coach, Way Vini, was the associate head coach for seven years. But then Vini and her head coach with the Owls, Tanya Cardoza, let go of their duties from Temple and Vini had the opportunity to find a new home for Watson at her alma mater of East Carolina. Sophie Burrows the score, Syracuse approaching 90 points early in the fourth quarter. Williams working against Perkins. Kenneth picks three, too strong offensive board. Bruin bounces it out to Williams. The Syracuse native back to Kenneth. Under 10 on the shot clock. Zaniya Wilson and Sophie Burrows with the beautiful trap up top, and it leads to Kennedy Perkins nearly colliding with her fellow Chicago native and Latham, and then eventually turning it over as that collision led to a tough time in the backcourt for Perkins. Well, you could see the confusion on her face. She figured that she had already bounced the ball, but she wasn't sure if it was an actual official dribble. She was calling out for her teammates to come to her help, but she risked the backcourt violation with the time, so she decided go with what you at least have a chance with, with dribbling the ball, and it was a double dribble. Alyssa Latham fouls Samora Watson as she races into the lane. It was not in the act of shooting, so no free throws, no action at the moment. A break in the action as Syracuse ahead by 50 with just six and a half to go. Looking for talent, and while Coach Leggett Jack was out for about a month with a medical procedure, he really took over the team during practice and stood at the helm. Not only is it Coach Carter and Coach Sharkey who joined FLJ from the MAC to the ACC, but also the Asia Fair, and Georgia Woolley. Woolley has not played yet this season, sidelined with an injury. SU's second leading scorer a year ago. Cheyenne McEvans also out with an injury at the moment. Another key piece to the Bulls' success under FLJ. Watson with under three seconds on the shot clock. Gets up a shot and draws a foul against Wilson. The Asia Fair, a fantastic night on the bench. 28 points for her on just 17 shots. At the line for a pair of shots. 
she's hard to stop. Suffice it to say, she can score through contact, and when you leave her alone, it's a bad day to be anyone under the basket. De'Asia Fair just has the mindset, and these are her words. It's either kill or be killed, especially as a five foot five guard. She's always had that chip on her shoulder. A couple of misses from the strike for Watson. And, and head coach Leggett Jack said after the Lafayette game that Fair has, like you said, Ian, had that chip on her shoulder. And since she was a high school, high school student in Rochester, that she felt like she was being underestimated. Now we see, that was true. Olatham gets it done. Over top of a six foot Megan Kennepick. Latham a double double for the second consecutive game to start her collegiate career. 11 points and 11 rebounds. Lanfer down the baseline. Williams all alone. Just rims out. Stays with Central Connecticut. Latham checks out and checking in for the first time tonight is Marielena Trenta Philly, one of the three freshmen on the Syracuse team from Athens, Greece. Got in during the final four minutes of SU season opening win against Lafayette. And back in the late stages a few days later against CCSU. Brune rolls a three off the rim, but it stays with the Blue Devils once more. Trent to Philly's main contribution in those four minutes. She got herself a rebound, and Coach Leggett Jack, when talking about the other freshmen, Burroughs and Latham, she said she, she treats them like they're older. Well, Trent to Philly, she said they're still working out some of those freshman woes for her and seeing what she can do. Air ball from Watson, now three for nine from the field. Gets it to Kennedy Perkins off a good feed. Perkins who has shown great improvement in her sophomore season with the score to put Syracuse up over 90 points halfway through the second half of the final quarter. Last time Syracuse scored 100 points in the game, if you're curious. The last time they played Central Connecticut State just under two years ago. Off the glass, Williams can't drop it. In that game, we saw Tisha Hyman, now at Rhode Island, almost record a quadruple-double. She did record a triple-double, just the fifth in SU history. Spent the first four years of her career here in orange and blue. A hook shot misses wide lab from Trenta Philly. Now 0 for 3 from the field to start her Syracuse career. The Syracuse native, Williams, over to Brune, and now Watson through two SU defenders. Gets her own miss and puts it in at just 5-6 over Kyra Wood. She did it on Monday, too, when she snagged nine boards. Trent to Philly feeds Burroughs. Freshman to freshman, and it pays off. And one over Kennefeck. Well, Trent to Philly and Burroughs after the, after the play pointed at each other, giving each other props. That's a good find. Burroughs in the low post, single coverage. She put on that move, had that quick jab over to her right and turned on the Jets in the other direction over to her left. Easy pickings underneath the basket. You mentioned freshmen playing well beyond their years. Sophie Burroughs now with double digit points in each of the first two games of her career. Off just nine shots. Burroughs, a native of Australia, not one of the only players on his team from the land down under. Georgia Woolley from Brisbane. Burroughs from Melbourne. And one of the better players in recent memory for Syracuse, also from Australia, and Tiana Mangakahia. Trent to Philly. The bench goes crazy after she nearly puts it in. Kennedy Perkins can't splash home the three. Into the game for the first time tonight for CCSU, the junior captain, Livy Pizzatola, number 15. Three-pointer from Kennefick. Off to the left, Burroughs aboard. 
McNabb, the Perkins. The sophomore guards connecting. The junior forward, Kyra Wood draws the foul with a big mismatch against the 5-5 Pizzatola. That was David versus Goliath there, and just in size alone. Kyra Wood, a big player, and she lets you know it. Ian, you touched on it earlier. Felicia will get Jack talked to us about it before the game. That's a 6'6 six, six wing, wingspan for Kyra Wood. That is a tough frame to guard against. 6'3 as far as height, and then she, that reach is just unbelievable. Woods might not have familiarity with Central Connecticut, but she does have some familiarity with Blue Devils head coach Way Vini. Vini was the associate head coach at Temple when Wood was a freshman two years ago. Big reason why Wood decided to play at Temple in Philadelphia her freshman season because her grandmother, a huge fan of the art scene in Philadelphia. And also she wanted to get out of Western New York where she lived the entirety of her life. Well, sometimes that's it for college, branching out Buffalo and Philadelphia. Good nine hours apart. Australia a little farther than nine hours away. Sophie Burrows off a spin and score. CCSU turns it over on the inbound. Syracuse nearly 20 points off Blue Devil turnovers. Lanfer converts on the other end. Wood tries to find Trent to Philly through two defenders for CCSU, including Alana Sellers, the redshirt sophomore in the game for the first time tonight for Coach Vini and company. Miscommunication. Coach Vini says, I can't touch the ball. Nice work by Lexi McNabb to get her fingers on it. The Connecticut native, Pezzatola, shot clock winding down, finds Lanfer, and the all-conference selection doesn't touch the rim. She's tried everything in her power to keep her team in this game, 12 points for the junior, but just 5 of 15 from the field. Trenta Philly still in search of her first collegiate points. Can't get it there. Second chance for Syracuse, Kyra Wood continues to pour on the points. Georgia Woolley and company, big fans of that from the bench. Well, remember last season in that deep run in the WNIT, Georgia Woolley was so important, scoring 30 points in that last game. Even though it was a loss, it marked the creation of her as a moral leader on this team. So her support means a lot to the other players. Coach Leggett Jack said after Lafayette that even though there are players hurt that are on the aren't on the court, they're still important members of this team in more ways than one. She's a very important player to this team, and she's going to have to play like she has over these first two games in Syracuse's upcoming schedule. Coppin State on Wednesday. You can catch that here on ACC Network Extra. But then, Jesse, a gauntlet, and it starts on the road against a top 15 Maryland team. That's right. Maryland, always a tough squad when it comes to ba women's basketball, but what I'm looking to is those Northern Iowa and Iowa State games down in Vegas. That's where Syracuse gets a real national spotlight on it for the first time this season. And on the biggest stage of that point in, that, in the first half, that'll be an important test of how Syracuse can perform against top-tier opponents. Both of those teams in the NCAA tournament a year ago and then finally rounding out the upcoming schedule in the month of November, the SEC ACC Challenge for the first time ever, Alabama comes to the Dome. You don't see that very often. No, it's, it's tough to get the, get the elephants in here. Sometimes they don't fit through the door. You almost forget with the Crimson Tide, that's what it stands for, an elephant. Yeah, yeah it's uh, one of those classic college mascots. Let's see, the SEC, uh, not only is the most creative with mascots, two tigers in that conference. True, but their slogan, unmatched. Oh, yeah, it just means more. 90 seconds to play here from the Dome. Syracuse well on its way to improving to 2-0 on the young season. A spin and a miss from Alana Sellers. Central Connecticut to drop to 0-2. Up next for the Blue Devils, they travel to play St. Peter's on Monday and then stay on the road to play Bryant a week from today. Four consecutive road games to start the season. Trenta Philly pivots once too many. 
The freshman turns it over. Allie sentence into the ball game and out after an admirable performance. Bella Lanfer, who finishes her night with 12 points, the star of his Central Connecticut team. As for Syracuse, the oldest player on the floor. Knee injury, those young players are going to have to step up for Syracuse throughout the rest of the campaign. Kennedy Perkins stepped up late last season. Kyra Wood has stepped up in this final quarter as she gets to the line, where Syracuse has only been 8 for 18 tonight. Sellers with the foul, her first. But we shall get Jack watches on Jesse and not a perfect performance, I'm sure she'll say, but the numbers very favorable for Syracuse in its second game of the season, especially for Wood, who hasn't missed a shot. Hard to argue with a nearly 50-point win. Could be a 50-point win for Syracuse. But remember after the exhibition game against St. Rose, remember after Lafayette, Leggett Jack said there's still much more to improve upon. It doesn't get much better than 100 points in a home game, though, as the crowd goes wild. Wood rattles in the second from the stripe. Make it 101. Most points in a single game for the Orange since the last time they played Central Connecticut two years ago, and the first time hitting triple digits in the FLJ era. Kyra Wood knocks it back down the planet Earth. Alana Sellers had nowhere to go with the ball there. An excellent finish to the game for Wood. 15 points, one shy of a career high. Kennedy Perkins dribbles it out. The dome on its feet. Perkins and company excited. Six players getting double figures. Triple figures on the scoreboard as the Orange improved to 2-0 with a win over Central Connecticut. 